How's it going, everybody? Today, I wanted to talk about a very questionable topic. The topic of if the Activision split was the best thing or not. Now, of course, the split has their pros, like the whole SA deal Activision had going on. I wouldn't want anyone, let alone our Bungie people, to have to go through any of that. But that's not to say that when Activision left, they didn't take some things with them. Now, this is a topic that I have voiced in the past and was only scoffed at it for doing so. I'm making this video now only because I see that the wool is now lifting off the eyes of the public and I should really take my points to the field with this. I do want to note these are only observations I've made since Activision is split, some of which could be speculation land. But let's get into the points now. I'm going to start with a point that is very relevant to this time. Secret missions. No doubt Destiny has had their time of phenomenal secret missions. D1 seemingly having the best of the two games. Outbreak Prime being absolutely peak in my opinion. But I know B Labs and D2 was pretty awesome as well. Now I know that there is that tweet going around about encryption, but I see that no more of an excuse. They have 3.6 billion, okay? <laughs> but even if that 3.6 billion wasn't on the table, the Eververse store was created for this specifically. Not really specifically, but they do use it to fund secret missions. And I bet you that Anarchy Ornament alone could fund three secret missions on God. But another reason why they aren't doing them could definitely be the lack of passion they have for them. It is no secret that Activision lives off these missions. Activision is the secret mission slash Easter egg king in this department. Call of Duty Zombies alone crutches the hell out of these, and we love them for it. So when they split, I have little to no reason to think that they took the passion of secret missions with them, and whatever residual passion Bungie had when they left went into corridors of time. But after that, nothing else. And this can segue into our next point, narrative direction. Specifically, with arguably the most interesting story that could have came out of the Destiny universe. And you can sum it up with Cade and his backstory, but I I'd like to broaden that to anything that involves Clovis and his story. And I'll make the great claim that when Activision split with Bungie, Bungie decided to drop that story. Now you're thinking, Ian, we just had a whole expansion around this. As genuine as I can get, I do ask you, does that story not seem incomplete to you? Clovis being secretly Banshee in the end? Is this really the coup de grace of the whole story? Now I don't want you fuming, so I'll let you know right now that Deep Stone Crypt is my favorite raid to this date, and there is no bigger fan to the lore behind Clovis Bray than me. And that leads me to think that the entire narrative behind Deep Stone Crypt was just thrown together last minute. Clovis had almost nothing to do with the raid, and when I finally thought that we were going to learn something about probably the most mysterious secret in Destiny, the long slow whisper, they just whittled it down to an emblem, and slapped a short non-fleshed out story about how it's just exos going crazy. What's that? A long slow whisper? Nah, it's just voices in their head. In Tanix being the end boss? I'd honestly invite you to tell me how any of that makes sense to the story of Deep Stone Crypt, Clovis Bray, or even the House of Salvation. The people that brought him back. The man has no house, but now he's just working for them. The raid Deep Stone Crypt is amazing as it is, but I have close to no doubt that it could have been so much better. We've struck gold when we could have struck diamond. And this all leads to the idea that the Deep Stone Crypt and the story behind Clovis and the Exos was a story that only Activision had the passion for in terms of fleshing out. Now hopping into super speculation land, I would jump the gun and go as far as to say that Cade 6 is just Activision property. And they killed him off because a deal was maybe struck before the split that Forsaken was going to be their last expansion together. And that's why Fortnite isn't getting Cade 6 and they got Elsie Bray instead. But I'm not holding that idea too close to my chest. And aside from the narrative direction, we can go into gameplay direction. Has anyone noticed that the second Activision left, everything became moats. The first raid out of the split was a moat mechanic raid, and it was season after season of the activities just being the same copy and paste moat mechanic. Then, a new dungeon comes out and we're all hyped to find out it's just moats. Crucify me for this one if you want, but Grasp of Avarice is a shite dungeon. Note that it was also for me the feather that broke the camel's back. We just came out of season of the moats 
and to my disappointment, we were greeted with more emotes at the end of that. I was fuming. I know a lot of people call Bungie out for reusing the same plate mechanic. I don't know why anyone's not calling them out for the moat mechanic. It's the worst of the two in my opinion. And not to mention the complete cancellation of the veil. They announced this as if it was confirmed, but it's just not a thing anymore. Probably was an Activision idea. Not to say we didn't get a replacement for them, and this does lead me into my next topic. That it's not to say that Bungie doesn't have their pros as well. So let's get into that. Bungie had the Giga Chad move to say no to a Destiny 3, and just to keep it all in Destiny 2. And this could be the reason why things have been slow for a while, especially in Beyond Light, to the fact that they're just trying to put everything from Destiny 1 into Destiny 2, which could also be a reason why we don't have a lot of new things. They are patchworking one of their biggest mistakes in their eyes, the movement from D1 to D2. And the Witch Queen campaign was a godsend from Bungie. I have absolutely zero complaints with that entire campaign. And the road ahead does look very fun in a lore intensive way. It's a story that they have made, this final shape saga, where instead of fighting the darkness, we conform with them to a certain extent for the betterment of the future for the Guardians. When on the other side, Activision probably would have just made it light versus dark, and it's only like that. A black and white story. No gray area where we are seen using powers from the darkness. Now I can understand if you disagree. I know these ideas are really out there. Maybe not all, because moats do need to go, I hate that mechanic with a passion, but I have the rare ability of being a man who can change their mind if there is a strong enough opposing argument. So let me know in the comments what you think. And if you're kind enough to hit that like button as well. Here are my plugs and I hope y'all have a great rest of your day. Peace.